So in this video, I'm cracking open a Lenovo IdeaPad 120S. Mind the squeal. Which model number we'll see down here. Uh, nope, we'll see it here. There we go. So the, the reason for this teardown is purely because it's not deciding to power on at the moment. So that will be getting opened. And hopefully the battery disconnected and reconnected and see if that will just be a quick, simple fix for this one. Once I find the correct screw to undo it with. Okay. Looks like it's a T6 screw. Along the way we'll find out whether or not these are different lengths. If we're lucky they're all going to be the same length, which then it doesn't matter where you put them back in. zoom out just a fraction. There we go. Now Lenovo, the original ThinkPads that had the small little mouse nipple on them, back in the day I wasn't a fan of them. I'm still not. I'm glad that design's slowly going away. But I am liking the newer style of keyboard that they've been pumping out now for probably at five years, this particular keyboard on this one I don't mind. Which is the, the size of the keys, the tactile feel, definitely been a fan of them. There we go, all screws out, and they all look identical. Excellent. Now I'll move these out of the way. I've got them all off to the side now. And here, I'm just going to use a pry card that I got floating around. This particular one was to put spread around thermal paste, but I'll see if it will enable me to get into the machine. There we go, that's given it some lift. And we're in. See one bit of plastic here, which most machines do like falling apart nowadays, disappointingly. The layout of this is slightly different to what I'm used to seeing, but I'd say this is a very low powered Pentium processor in this one. I'll zoom in on the board here, and I'll grab something to point with that isn't going to damage the main board if I touch it. Well, this is to be extra careful. So we've got the daughter I.O. board over here, which contains the, the right speaker. What have we got here? Reset button, SD slot, or micro SD slot, headphone jack, and one single USB. Got the hinges up here. Got a flex cable, or FPC cable, going from the daughter board to the main board which judging by these pins over here, it looks like it's soldered directly onto it, which is not crash hot if you need to replace it. Got the CMOS or UFEI battery over here. Your Wi-Fi card here, which does look to be upgradable. There we go. And then moving on, the connector for the L-shaped battery which is very odd, which I'm half curious why they've put it along this location here. I'd almost think that that would be there purely because then it could actually cool. Boy, I'm imagining it would have provide a cooler keyboard to touch. Moving along, we've got nothing really going along the front here. Looks like a bit of a brace for the trackpad. So when you click, 
That'll be where it's pushing onto. Moving on to the right hand side here, we see not many points of upgradability. But the, old, the alternative stereo speaker over here, which I do find it slightly odd that it is physically the connector, is on the left and the right of the actual mainboard on a daughter board and the mainboard. Typically it goes to here and then would daisy chain over to the other speaker. Anyway, digging back in. So right here we see the passively cooled Celeron, or actually Pentium I believe in this one, sorry. And further down over here we have a M.2 slot, which this one here I would believe would be a SATA, uh, would be a PCIe M.2, rather than a SATA M.2. This one's only 128 gig in capacity, so that can be upgraded if you need be. But that really is all the, up, the only points of upgradability on this system. You can upgrade your Wi-Fi card and you can upgrade your M.2 NVMe. Now I will double check that and leave it. If it is a M.2 SATA, I will leave a comment in the description. Anyway, looking over on the right hand side of the board here, we have the Type-C. HDMI out, USB 3, and power jack. So the power jack itself, if you do damage it, you will need to micro solder that. So looking at it, typical breaking point on it is right here. So usually I've seen these where they've snapped, mainly on Lenovo's and Aces, where this section here snapped. And you can either solder that directly back on, or you have to pull the board out unsolder the jack and solder in a new one from there. So yeah, I hope this helps you with your teardown or actually getting into your Lenovo idea pad. But from here I'm going to troubleshoot it for a few different other issues. I'll simply disconnect the battery, connect it to power, check it for 19 volt going up here to the charger port pin and hopefully that is the case and hopefully it's just the main board's gone stupid, just needs to lose the power and restart it. Anyway, that will do for today, and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.